From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The South Africa National Energy Development Institute last month launched the first solar district heating system in South Africa at the Wits University's Junction campus, saving the buildings millions in energy costs a year. Malene Arnoldi attended the launch. The Wits Junction district heating project combines solar, cogeneration and gas heating technologies to cater for just over 1,100 students across 14 residence buildings which consume around 94,000 litres of hot water a day. The installation comprised a 600 square metre solar heating plant and should save 40 million rand over the next 20 years. Black Dot Energy CEO Wally Weber tells us more about the project implementation. The entire plant, as you see it here, is the storage, the solar collector, and the two kilometer district heating ring main was all done in under six months. The point being is that South Africa already has the infrastructure to implement this plant. What was key in this, and why we're not seeing more of this, was really the Austrian support in backing these relationships, bringing partners together through the Soul Trade program, and really just doing a lot of convincing work. Because as we are convinced of it, it's really the process of convincing the Department of Higher Education, convincing commercial customers. And that's really key, and we missed that this morning. All this within six months, and all local supply, um, uh, contractors. So it's not the implementation, it's really just convincing customers that it's viable, and the 27% internal rate of return we got here, and please, the numbers, that's without financing. So this project stands on its own legs before financing. The financing was a support from, from the, the Austrian um, government, the Soul Trade program, to say commit to this. We back the technology, take the opportunity, take the chance and implement this. With renewable energy on the rise in South Africa, government has a crucial involvement in these kinds of projects, with continued funding towards research and training. Department of Higher Education and Training Director General Kwebin Kundla Konde shares his insight. It is in the program uh, of government to explore the utilization of renewable energy in the country. And we have, to that effect, undertaken quite a number of research initiatives through the science and technology department, science and technology department, working with CSIR and other agencies, uh, which the totality of the work that we are doing in the country has also led to the establishment of institutes like SANET, amongst, amongst others, which is an indication that as government uh, in the country, we are actually serious and we are investing resources in terms of research and innovation towards the use of renewable energy. Weber attributed the success of the project to solid public-private partnerships and shares what is more to come from WITS. WITS has in the meantime committed to two further hybrid cogeneration projects. Um, the one project is a 160 kilowatt hybrid project three times the size of what you're seeing here. The second project is for the Three Sisters residences, 200 kilowatts. And that is in fact part of a future solar thermal cooling network that we're starting to put in place. That 200 kilowatts, four times the size. So if it wasn't for the Austrian and the Soltrain support, they would have never had that platform to really in fact get that number of a 27% IRR and decide that this is the technology to back, back, this is the platform to expand on. So really this has been a, a tremendous support. And again, I must support what Doran is saying. The Salt Train and Austrian support is much more than the funding. It's creating the confidence with these partners. And rightfully so, who's Black Dot? Black Dot is just another face. But Black Dot on the shoulders of the Soul Train program, on the shoulders of the partners, with the backing of Senedi, yeah. with the backing of the Austrian government saying we're fully behind you, you can't quantify that in many terms. Other news making headlines, Fujifilm South Africa has revamped and relaunched its innovation center in Ruderport 
to showcase its ever-increasing medical system capabilities. Natasha Odendahl tells us more. Fujifilm South Africa's strong lineage of medical systems, digital and computer radiography systems, and X-ray film are starting to overshadow its traditional, more well-known photographic and film divisions. Fujifilm South Africa MD Takio Hata tells us more. One of the biggest strengths is the diagnosis. So, like uh, we started like X-ray film, using film for X-ray film, just like normal. But using those kind of experience in the medical sector, we made a more digital X-ray. Then going to the further, further beyond, beyond means more bigger equipment like uh, even CT. So we are going that. And then after that, so we see the market potential. For example, like a Limolula area, they need a more a diagnosis. But unfortunately, they are lacking uh, doctors. Number of doctors are not good enough to cover such a big nation. So we provide the best equipment to have a proper diagnosis, good quality products. And then we have our colleagues to look after the customer. So partners, proper support after support. And then if there's a lacking in the doctors, those images can be sent to the central hospital where doctor exists. So that we can send back those image and report. So those communication will be enabled by because of IT medical solutions. So we are seeing that those demand. Then we provide the solution. Now market also see the value of the solutions. Mm. Not only just machine or film or solution. They need to see that those solution which will meet their demand and those ongoing support. While often perceived as a film and photography company, Fujifilm positioned itself as a medical imaging specialist, maintaining focus on technological innovations with investments in digital radiography, endoscopy, ultrasound, healthcare information technology, contract development and manufacturing, regenerative medicine and new drug development. We already have a big uh, advantage of knowledge database from those image through the, from the film days lots of image. And then AI, we have the laboratory. We developed last year about the laboratory for AI in Japan. So we are keep developing, especially for the utilization for this medical, is one of the key primary sector for us. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.